just the possibilities. Hey guys, Joe Klimczewski, founder of the Diet Doc and creator of the Macro Doc Calculator. In my second episode for the Macro Mastery Series, if you guys want to go back to my YouTube channel, you can see the Macro Minute Series, which was a series of just short uh, introductory segments on different principles of macronutrient-based dieting, or flexible dieting as some people like to call it. But now we're digging a little deeper and we're into the Macro Mastery Series. We're going to take each one of those topics and drill down into how you can use those principles to help yourself through uh, successful dieting and physique transformation. So uh, first of all, just going back to a little bit of an introduction as to what this is. Uh, 25 years ago, as I was setting up uh, this video, it dawned on me that it was, it was 1993 when I competed in my first drug-free bodybuilding contest. <clears throat> and for the first time, instead of following a rigid diet structure, uh, I had used a flexible plan, and that was uh, with the help of a friend who was a personal trainer, uh, and it was actually kind of rebelling against his, his dogma. He, had, he was helping me out and handing me just copies of meal plans from, from bodybuilding magazines, and I didn't, didn't want some of those foods sometimes, and so I kind of uh, kicked the can a little bit and uh, moved down the road with, with what became flexible dieting, and it was simply just saying, look, if I'm supposed to, or I've chosen to eat a certain amount of calories, and I've broken that down into macronutrients, <clears throat> protein, carbs, and fat, you know, do they all have to come from one protein source? Does it all have to be chicken breast, or do all of my carbohydrate sources have to be from these these five on an exchange list? And I simply uh, went down the path of of counting macronutrients. I I didn't think it was anything. Uh, extraordinary at the time. It seemed very much common sense. But now 25 years later, and I did spend you know, from 1998, five years later, another 15 years writing for uh, bodybuilding and fitness magazines. And so it definitely became defined and known as flexible dieting. Uh, I, I still like to call it macronutrient-based dieting or macro-based dieting. But uh, the, the main thing is you have two sides of that. People like to focus on the word flexibility and, and rightly, that's how it started. We moved from very, very rigid structure into adding layers of flexibility. But the structure is still important, and that's what I want to talk about, is how we can, we can use the best of both worlds to make sure that you have what you need for successful physique transformation, managing your own diet, and uh, even if you work with a coach. I mean, I, I certainly think that's a tremendous investment. I work with coaches through... Uh, my life and I still in, in different endeavors I am always working with somebody on things that are important to me so so even if you have a coach these principles are going to be very important to you so remember structure is always necessary and I had a phone call with a client today uh, a gentleman from Canada wanted to chat about some things he's he's uh, going through and one of them is he works off-site sometimes he'll travel for a week at a time and in two weeks he's got a vacation coming up and, uh, you know, everything's up in the air, so what do you do? Uh, we had already started in a place that was very unique to him, and it's even unique to macro-based dieting or flexible dieting, and, and it goes like this. In the past, maybe 10, 15 years ago, I would have said, okay, here are your macronutrients, this amount of protein, carbs, and fat within these narrow ranges. You can divvy them up throughout the day. Here are solid principles to follow. Obviously, you don't want all of your protein in one or two meals. You there are some structural elements that are still very sound regardless of what you do. But as I said, 10 or 15 years ago, I might have just given him those macronutrients and said, you know, let's just use the foods you like, the times you think work best for you and your schedule, your training, and let's just let the chips where they fall where they may. In other words, today you might want five meals, tomorrow six, the next day eight, the next day two. You can have any food sources that are, are semi-decent, high quality, and go on. That's maximum flexibility. Even if we get away from the what I would just think is is pretty stupid idea of eating nothing but junk food just to prove that calories are still the foundational level. And even if you eat low quality foods, you can still lose body fat eating nothing but junk food. That is true. Um, 
not sure exactly what you're trying to prove with that, but I want to just even discard that. That's not what we're talking about. I want to talk about uh, when you're serious about health goals and serious about physique transformation. And here's what I did with this client. Uh, he was used to counting macronutrients, but I said, here's what I want. I want to set you up because you already know how to do that in, in, a, in a way that gives you even more flexibility, but it's because it rests on a new level of structure that you've never encountered. So I said, here's what we're going to do. Let's look at your schedule. You train in the morning, so we're going to have a pre-workout meal, then we're going to have a breakfast, then we're already within three or so hours from lunch, so we'll have lunch, then we're going to need an afternoon snack, then we're going to have dinner. Can we agree upon that structure for all of the reasons that I could give you? You know, I think that's very sound and it gives us enough space between meals so you can start using body fat as a higher percentage of your energy needs. And so it all looked great to him. I said, okay, let's now pick out a breakfast, a, a post, or I'm sorry, a pre-workout meal, a lunch, a snack that you think fit very well. What would you like? Let's, let's go through that process right now. So he picked out some things and we manipulated the macronutrients to where I wanted them, uh, including the lunch. And I said, okay, these are foods that you can, you can at least bank on having for a week at a time. You're gonna go to the grocery store, maybe do a little food prep. And he said, absolutely. I said, okay, now we can use your dinner as a point of flexibility. So, you know, you might have a different protein source. You might be in a restaurant. You might be doing something else. This is where we get to practice using good judgment and flexibility, but that way you don't have to worry about making all those decisions every single day. Uh, in some of the self-help blogs out there, there are a few people who have talked about making fewer and fewer decisions as kind of an exhaustible resource. So, uh, I, I use Mark Zuckerberg as an example. He wears a gray t-shirt every day so he doesn't have to think about what he's going to wear. Those, those are not bad uh, elements to, to add to your life to say, look, I don't have to make a new decision every day. I can kind of decide something and move on. Food is just like that. Flexibility is not contrary to that. It can enhance it. So here's what my client's been doing. Uh, in six weeks, he's lost 17 and a half pounds and he's been traveling every week. And when he goes out, since he's used to doing the same thing, he can kind of pack his, his food intake uh, for the week. Uh, he knows he's gonna be able to go get a, a lunch that he wants somewhere. Uh, he can go out with the guys for dinner in different places and make the right calls there. Everything's going great. Now when we need to transition for a vacation, or let's just say he, he wants to change up foods. You know, hey, I'm getting kind of bored with this afternoon snack. Can we make a change? Of course we can. Let's again almost deconstruct or reverse engineer the macronutrients we're looking for. Even if we have to restructure the day a little bit, let's come up with a little bit of a new plan and try that for a week or two. And he might find that he likes one of those two things better. So that's why, you know, continuing to experiment is a good idea. Uh, he might find that his his progress is better with one or the other, or that he feels better, has less hunger. So those are the reasons why when you experiment in a controlled way, you can, you can determine which metrics are making a change or an improvement for you. So use flexibility as a tool. Rely on structure when it's helpful, and then you can employ that flexibility when it helps. And this is what I mean by building a lifestyle of structure. What we're doing for my client is saying, you know, look, this is what's working for you right now. And in the future, all we have to do is make these changes, make these adjustments. You've already been aware of your caloric intake, your caloric needs or what, what you're doing there. Uh, you, you're also now uh, experienced at different macronutrient profiles because along the way, matter of fact, I had to add some food. He's been losing even through that initial loss of glycogen and water, uh, metabolism still being very high from being in a non-dieted state. Um, you know, he still actually continued to lose two and a half pounds a week. And I said, okay, that's, that's pretty quick as a pace six weeks in, let's add a little bit of food. So I was able to say, you know, for your evening meal, let's simply bump up carbs, 25 grams, which is another half cup. If you're used to eating some rice, we're going to add half a cup of rice, something like that. So this is where, when you have that structure as a lifestyle, it's very easy to be flexible. Now let's take flexibility to a little bit deeper level. 
what if he just has to blow a day out of uh, his normal schedule? Uh, meaning, you know, who knows? You know, maybe he has to pick up his child from school or uh, he, he just can't eat. He's, he's in a job where he can't even eat for eight hours. Now what happens? Well, then you're just falling back into making the best decisions one at a time. Uh, if you haven't eaten in a long time, you have, quote, saved up a lot of calories or macros. You don't have to shove them all in at the end of the day. You can just say, well, I was a little low today. You know, maybe there are some days in the next week I might be a little high for some reason. You know, that's fine. That just kind of works itself out. Or you can just say, I would much rather be low than extremely high. But that does work on the other side. What if a social event came up and he just made the decision, I'm going to eat a little bit more because these foods here are maybe a little bit more indulgent. Um, I happen to love them. I, I want to eat a little bit more. So I'm making the decision not to binge, but to just eat a little bit more. And so now my carbs or fat were a little bit higher. Again, so what? You know, the rest of the week you're going to work hard. You might bring them down a little bit the next day if you can. Uh, if not, I don't think it's going to have that much impact because in an entire week, think how many meals you're consuming. And if you limit one of those points of flexibility, even on the overage side, to, to you know, just a mitigated amount, you know, a very conscious decision of what you're going to consume, that's when you're using flexibility very responsible in a very responsible way, I should say. So that's what I mean by scaling flexibility for your needs. There are gonna be days when you just have to do something a little bit different. Could be on the high side, could be on the low side. But here's what I want you to remember, guys. All of the resources that are at your disposal, uh, certainly we keep packing them into the dietdoc.com. We're gonna start housing these videos on the macrodoc.com. So we've continued to update the algorithm from time to time to make sure that it's performing like we need to. Uh, just, you know, tens of thousands of you guys now have used it and I love to see that because it gives us a much finer filter to make those changes. But I also have an Instagram game now. I think I'm up to eight or nine posts. So uh, uh, old dogs can learn new tricks, but it is a platform I want to try and at least notify you guys uh, as to what we're doing. Um, just because of when this video is coming out, I want to let you guys know of some travel things. Tasmania is coming up. If any of you guys are over in Australia in April, we're going to look at that. So I'll, I'll limit, limit the schedule to that, but that's something that's coming up very quickly. So I want to let you guys know. So I hope that was helpful, guys. Uh, this will be on my YouTube channel, and uh, we will be back for episode three of Macro Mastery soon. Thanks, guys.